podcast bites. Welcome to Living 4D with Paul Check. One of the challenges, as you know, is that to really do a program properly requires a skilled assessment. And very few people in the exercise or even rehab world know how to do the kind of assessment it takes to gather the data that's needed to decide which joints need to be mobilized and exactly which muscles need to be stretched. People think you can just do global stretching, but they don't realize the body's like a musical instrument, right? It's Imagine if you have a, a beautiful 12-string guitar, Eric Clapton's guitar, <laughs> if you loosen every one of those strings, general stretching, the question I have is, does it play better music? Mm. No. It's out of tune. And if you tighten them all, does it play better music? No. It's not tuned yet. So one of the things that I try to help people understand is that your muscles are actually living sound and energy conductors, and they are holding hands with glands and organs, and each of those muscles operates on a frequency that correlates with the glands and the organs that they're linked to neurologically and through the arteriovascular system. So in essence, when you're using your arms, you're generating power that if you're not using more energy than you're generating, which we'll get into in a minute, then your heart channels gets the first dibs on that energy because it's linked to the heart channel and the lung channel, right? Mm -hmm. So without going through all of them, what I'm saying is if somebody is too tight it changes the frequency so they're out of tune, not just in the, in the length, tension, relationships, and posture, but they're actually out of tune in ways that affect the glands, the organs, and the psyche of the individual. And I'll give you an example of that. Have you ever had emotion trapped in your body and then released your abdominal wall like I taught you to and got up off the ground and went, oh my God, <laughs> something happened? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, certainly. So there you go. When people keep doing too much abdominal exercise, they don't realize they're choking up the flow of their emotional energy because it disrupts the balance of the yin and yang expressions of our emotions. And so think of all the athletes that just sit up and crunch and sit up and crunch to death, not realizing that they're pulling their chest down, pulling their head forward and trapping all that emotions. And that's disrupting the flow of their third chakra and second chakra and even root chakra energies. So the point that I'm making is that a proper assessment is like, like if you don't know how to tune a guitar, it doesn't matter how good the guitar is, right? I.e., if you don't know how to tune Kobe Bryant, who's one of the best athletes in the world, then all you can do is general stretching or no stretching. Right. But to evaluate and realize okay, each of these muscles has a working relationship. And if one muscle in the front is short, the pec minor, tonic muscles actually steal the energy from their antagonist. So while now your lower trapezius and middle trapezius are getting neurologically shut down because this tonic muscle is an energy hog and it can actually rob the energy from its antagonist. So it facilitates a snowball effect that goes downhill. So by assessing the body like Czech professionals are taught to do, they know all the orthopedic measurements that actually tell them, well, the muscles that pull that shoulder forward are these muscles. So if it's sitting forward, we know those muscles are too short. The point being is we're at a uh, sort of at a point now where, where, and I've been saying this for a long time. I've told personal trainers, look, you need as much knowledge as a physical therapist. You got to realize physical therapists play around with stretch cords and pink dumbbells. But people come to personal trainers with all sorts of problems and they got them doing walking lunges with their body weight and trying to do clean and jerks with, <laughs> with weight plates on end and kettlebell training, right? And they haven't had any of this developmental training. So it's actually quite crazy. But, but the, the reality of it is, is that, you know, the best you can do is, is get a book like my golf biomechanics manual or Tennis Biomechanics Manual by Lee Brandon and I, or the How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, that gives you the 20 key stretch tests you need to do. And as I show and taught you, you don't stretch what doesn't need to be stretched. Right. You only stretch what's tight, and you never stretch both sides equally if there is a unilateral imbalance. So if your left chest is tight, but your right one isn't, keep stretching the left one until it matches the right one. And if you still need more range of motion, then stretch them together, or you just 
maintain the imbalance. Avocado, motherfucker.